I had a recent endocarditis lecture for my residents at the University of Kentucky at Lexington, and I kind of put in the ultrasound section within that big lecture, and I recorded it, and here it is. Let me know if this is a format that works. If not, I'll go back to the regular format. Also, if you want to scan with me and a bunch of other people that actually know ultrasound, go to ultrasoundpodcast.com slash live dash courses and look up our courses that we have there. We have Castle Fest, which is coming up. It's a very exciting conference. And Cabo Fest in Mexico is another fun one. With Cabo, if you want 10% off of your registration, type in 5 min sano 10 in the discount code and get a discount on the house or on me. Now on to the podcast. All right, so let's talk about how to ultrasound. You guys know how to talk about ultrasound. I just saved it for this section. So the probe that you're going to want to use is going to be the phased array transducer. This is for the heart. If you want to find complications, which we're going to talk about later, you can use your curvilinear or your linear. But for the heart, the phased array transducer is the one you're going to look for. Now, you're not going to do this ultrasound on everybody. You're going to do it on your patients that that you have a high pretest probability of your patients having endocarditis. And any view will work. There's no view that's the best view for endocarditis. So we're just going to do a couple of associations. So we have a normal on this side and we have abnormal on the left. Can you guys tell me which valve is abnormal? Look for a little booger, a little valve booger. See that guy right there? It's a very small little uh, vegetation on that tricuspid valve here. This is what normal looks like. No little booger on this tricuspid valve. Little tiny booger on that tricuspid valve. This is endocarditis. You know, keeping on that same view, and this is what a mitral endocarditis looks like, a mitral valve endocarditis. It's a little trickier to see, but you can see that there's a little kind of flappy thing right about there. You see that? That is a mitral endocarditis. And then on the right side of the screen, you have what normal looks like. This is a perishable long axis view of that same patient that had mitral endocarditis. This is a normal mitral valve. This is an abnormal mitral valve. See how there's a bunch of goo on it? That's what endocarditis looks like. It's not that complicated. If you see a thickened, gooey, mobile mass on one of the valves, it's usually going to be endocarditis. Here's another one. It's, if this is a patient with a right-sided endocarditis. This is a perishable short-axis view, and I'm up a little bit towards the base, a little closer to the aorta. Um, you can see here on this one, this is the aortic valve here. This is the right atrium. That's the tricuspid valve. This is the right ventricle, and then you can't really see it very well, but right here, that little flappy thing is going to be the pulmonic valve. Patients can definitely have pulmonic valve endocarditis as well. What does this guy have? See that thing right there? Monstrous tricuspid valve vegetation. This is a sub-xiphoid view. Where's the vegetation? Mitral valve, exactly. So right here, this is normal over here. This is abnormal. You see that little booger right there? That is a mitral valve endocarditis. You see that like bright thing right there that's causing that weird artifact below? What's that? It's a little calcification. You'll see that on valves. You see shadowing behind it. That, that one over there, this is not endocarditis, this thing up here, but this guy right here is. There's another sub xiphoid view. Which valve is it? Tricuspid or mitral? Tricuspid, yeah. So right here, that's that little booger on the valve. This is tricuspid endocarditis. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you see there's little white spots there, 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 there. Those are all septic emboli. This is a patient that had been given azithromycin for a multifocal pneumonia in the outpatient. Obviously, it didn't work. You can actually find these on ultrasound fairly frequently. So you guys see there's a white line up here. This is a normal pleural line. You see this dip that happens right here? That is a septic emboli. That is, some of us call that a subpleural consolidation. I like to call them a small pleural consolidation. It doesn't matter. It's a little tiny dip, a little circular dip in that pleural line. If you see this in a patient that you suspect might have endocarditis, this is how you diagnose it. In fact, I've actually had patients where I didn't really think it was endocarditis. I found the septic emboli on the ultrasound and then looked at the heart and found that endocarditis. So it is pretty useful. That patient, by the way, that I just showed it had this one right here. So you see that big booger on the tricuspid valve? 
I've actually found this in the liver and the spleen as well. Can you guys see the little white spots inside the liver, these images? These were uh, septic emboli to the liver I was able to find on the ultrasound. So we can see one up here, this big one right here. That's a little septic embolus. There's another one right there that you can see on that ultrasound. Remember, TEE or transesophageal echocardiography is much better than TTE. There's no doubt about it. The specificity is a slightly, it's not as different, but the specificity for TEE is still much higher than TTE. So uh, things that will mess up your sensitivity are a couple, you. And this is not you as in like, I'm like signaling you out because you're a resident or an attending or a medical student. This is you because there are limitations to you. The ultrasound image is only as good as you, your skill as an operator and the ultrasound machine that you have. So remember, if you don't see it, you haven't ruled out anything. It just means you haven't seen it. If you have a calcified valve that can actually block the sound waves from seeing the valve. If you have a prosthetic valve, these things are tough. When you have patients that present with symptoms concerning for endocarditis, they have a prosthetic valve. I almost just the presence of them having that prosthetic valve with symptoms of endocarditis, that's almost enough for me to just treat it because it's very difficult for me at bedside to tell if that valve is abnormal or normal. And if that lesion, that endocarditis lesion is small, it'll be very difficult to pick up. There are a few things that will actually give you a bad specificity as well. There's a huge list, a bunch of stuff I didn't even know existed. There's this thing called a fibroelastoma. Has anybody heard of a fibroelastoma? It's the second most common cardiac, intrinsic cardiac tumor behind the myxoma. Myxoma. Yeah, myxoma. Um, it's very rare, but it can look like endocarditis. There's these things called Lambel's excrescences, excrescences, which uh, I think some people are just calling them a valvular strands, which makes more sense. I think I've seen a lot of these. There are patients that have a slight, a little bit of a history that might be concerning for endocarditis, and I see something weird on the valve, but it's not like a good booger like I like seeing. Sometimes patients that have, especially in their, uh, I think it's seventh and eighth decades of life, they'll have these little one millimeter strands that are just on the valves. It's more common in the aortic valve. That sometimes looks like endocarditis. Morantic endocarditis, that's another word for kind of that aseptic, aseptic endocarditis, like limbid sacs endocarditis. Redundant chordae, they just have real flappy endocarditis, pearless cuffs, myxomatous changes. All these are more likely in the later decades of life, but endocarditis is actually also pretty common in the later decades of life. So to recap on that, don't use your ultrasound just willy-nilly on everybody. You have to have a clinical suspicion of endocarditis before you look and you're basically looking for boogers of the valves. It's not that complicated. If you see a booger on the valve, it's a high likelihood that they have endocarditis. And remember, TEE is better than TTE. That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sono. Please feel free to send me an email or a tweet. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Leave me your name and your email in the little text box and never miss another video. And if you want your podcast sent directly to your smart devices, you can always type in 5-Minute Sono in whatever podcasting service you use. Leave me a rating and review and subscribe.